Beach because it's just in my side. We met George Bush not too long after my son was killed, and it really looked like he bought his suit from Walmart. <laughs> I'm like, if you're going to pay that money for a suit, don't you think it should look better? <laughs> well, 1970 was a very turbulent time for our nation and our world. But people, especially you young people, you need to realize that in this age of corporate control of the media and the corporate fascists that control our country, it is never more urgent than now that we put our warm bodies on the streets to stop Bush Co. and the war machine. And I am a to the students, the ones who weren't born in 1970, or before 1970. May 4th, 1970, I was 12 years old. Of course, I heard about it. The media did a, a slightly better job in those days than they do now. We were constantly bombarded with the images from Vietnam. I remember the photos from here. I remember 1968 being horrified at the violence at the Democratic National Convention when my friend's mother was saying, beat the hippies, it made me sick. Even then I was a budding radical. I don't understand why our soldiers would kill our own people, let alone the people of Vietnam. I couldn't understand that. But that day was probably a beautiful day like this in Southern California where I come from. I probably had a softball game. I probably um, was worried about school the next day. I, I can't exactly remember, it's not the time, like I was six years old when Kennedy was killed and I remember, remember exactly where I was when I heard that news. I was standing by the jungle bin and my teacher's daughter told us. But, I didn't even know or think that in nine years I would give birth to a, a boy, a child, a baby that would die in another mistake of a war. You have to put yourself in that position. Your children will be very precious to you when you have them. My grandchildren are already precious to me and I don't even have any yet. But I used to promise my boy Casey that he would never die in a war. And he did. Because his mother never stood up like the students at Kent State did. His mother never, even though I was against the war, I never went to one war protest before my son was killed. It is so urgent if we want to give a, a earth that is peaceful and sustainable to our children. It's time for us to put our warm bodies on the line. <laughs> the friends of the fallen were up here talking about them, so I want to talk a little bit about Casey. Rosemary talked about Augie. Casey was a lot like every American young person. He had been in school three years before he was recruited. He loved the World Wrestling Federation. I would tell him, Casey, you know this word me, you realize it's safe, right? <laughs> and he would say, yeah, mom, but it's, it's just um, soap opera for male. <laughs> he loved Star Wars. He loved The Simpsons. He loved the children and animals. He loved his brother and sister. He loved his God and he was devoted to his church. He wanted to get married and have his own family. He wanted to teach elementary school and he wanted to become a deacon in the Catholic Church. And he was brave and he was honorable and he was killed by a coward who was dishonorable. I 
I said this over the place where Ellis and the crowd sat. And my first thought was of her mother, of when her mother got the news that she did fall. You send your children off to college, you don't expect something like this to happen. When your child goes off to war against your wishes and against his wishes, you know it's going to happen, but you never want it to happen. In the tradition of Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman, St. Joan of Arc, Rachel Corey, Marla Rizicki, and other people who said enough is enough, Allison stood her ground, and for her sacrifice, we are all richer. We need to purge our own hearts. However, we need to purge our own hearts of the hatred that is fed by bitterness before we can purge our country of the hatred that is fed by greed. Let's stand peacefully, yet fearlessly, in the face of the war machine that devours our children with their greed and blood blood soaked hatred. One speaker before me said, Jesus never started a war, and he never started a religion either, no matter what the Catholics or Baptists say. <laughs> but Jesus did start a nonviolent revolution, and his sacrifice has been bastardized by the religious right. Christians, they are nothing like your Christ. It was proved here and elsewhere during the Vietnam anti-war movement that we as a peace movement cannot fight them using their own tactics and methods. We don't have what they have. We can and must not even fight them. Our country fights wars on drugs, poverty, and terror. Our struggle has to be a struggle. It's technically a war on war and violence, but we are not soldiers or generals. We are humans. And the people we allow our government to kill in our names with our tax money are humans too. We need to work for peace and to see the heart light in our enemies so eventually we will prevail. Buddhists have a saying, people die twice. Once when their body dies, and once when the last person who remembers them dies. Allison, Jill, Jess, Sandy, Augie, Casey, they will never die. As long as there is one of us still standing strong like they did, and wavering like they did. Standing in the face of violence, hatred, and greed, working for peace, they will live forever. Thank you.